Su Shu Gang, who inherited billions of inheritance in the 21st century, immediately transformed into the weak and deceitful Su Shu of 1977. In this era of scarcity of food and clothing, fortunately her large villa and wealth also came with it. Then she had an extra soft bun mom and a little cousin to take care of. Relatives came to propose marriage with ill intentions and wanted her to marry a second married man. As soon as she entered, she became a stepmother. After retiring and changing jobs, Liang Jingua adopted two orphans of his comrades under his name. In order to better take care of his two children, he wanted to find a new mother for them. Everyone said that Su Xu in the town was timid, indecisive, and kind. hearted. Liang Jingua planned to meet him. In order to take his cousin away from his hometown, Su Xu fell in love with Liang Jingua, who was tall, handsome, and had a stable job. One belt, two belts, one belt, 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 one belt. Not long after getting married, the two of them shouted directly Liang Jingua. It was hasty. Su Shu. I miscalculated. Liang Jingua. He has a black face every day when his wife and son are talking about divorce. Su Shu. Every day, I have to be talked about by male chauvinists, my blood pressure skyrocketing and I just want to show off. Big son. Mom, if you divorce my dad, can we not divorce you from my dad? Little son. My stepmother is also a mother. I don't want to be a wild child without a mother. Keywords of the novel. Wearing a villa without a pop dot up window, wearing a villa with a villa without a pop dot up window. Download the complete set of TXT, and read the latest chapters of wearing a villa with a villa without a pop dot up window. Chapter 1. Wearing until 1977. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Wearing Until 1977, I'm talking about Auntie, don't be foolish at your age. Besides, Su Shu didn't come out of your belly or was not raised by yourself. Even if Su Shu was born to you, she is a girl. When you get old, can you still expect your daughter to care for you? When Su Shu gets married, you'll be old, sick, and in pain. Don't you still have to rely on my son Zhang Baojian to take care of your old age and see you off? Su Xu is unhappy and doesn't want to get married. Shouldn't you really let her temper you? You're still a mother, don't you think it's wrong? Where is there a mother who listens to her daughter? Since then, she's always a daughter who listens to her mother and does whatever she wants. Su Xu was awakened by Li Damiai's loud voice in the living room, and the door panels couldn't stop Li Damiai's personal speech-like voice. She stretched lazily and stood behind the door with interest, listening to how absurd Li could say. Outside the door, Zhang Fun was very hesitant. She is usually a person with soft ears, and now the person who talks to her and teaches her how to do things is also her sister. In law. Zhang Fun has to listen with a smile and dare not interrupt her. Su Xu's mother, Su Xu is already twenty years old this year. You can go back to our village and see who has a twenty-year-old girl who hasn't gotten married yet. If a woman is young, she won't be able to stay. The more she stays, the less valuable she becomes. Seeing that my sister Dot in Dot Law didn't make a sound, Miss Li's voice grew louder as she spoke. In Li's eyes, Su Xu and her eldest aunt are both soft buns. She doesn't avoid Su Shu for anything she says or does. Anyway, even if Su Shu is unhappy, she will only keep it in her heart, so she is not afraid that what she says will be heard by Su Shu herself. The Liang family can offer a dowry of 200 yuan, and it's time for my family's marriage proposal. This 200 yuan is just enough for my family to get married. You are Baogun's biological aunt and your Zhang family only has Bao Zhen as a male root. You don't have a son, and when you get old, 
you have to rely on Bao Zhen to support your old age and see off your life. You must come up with this 200 yuan. Li Demai spoke confidently, and giving birth to her son Zhang Bao Zhen was her greatest confidence. The only incense in the Zhang family comes from her belly, so she speaks confidently in the Zhang family's territory. By the way, your uncle's girl movie is called E, right? You don't really plan to keep it, do you? I said you're just a fool. How can you take care of other people's children? You really treat yourself like an old lady doing all the work of serving people all day. If you have this kind of heart, why don't you cherish my precious roots more? In my opinion, you can find someone to sell that girl from your second uncle's house. Although she is a beautiful girl, there will always be someone who wants her. Upon hearing this, Su Xu opened the door and walked out. Unlike the original owner who walked with a bent waist and lowered his head, and had a soft bun-like temperament that was easily manipulated, Su Xu straightened his waist. She walked out the door, impatiently reaching out to pull Zhang Fun, who had been keeping her head down and listening silently, behind her. Li, your daughter is one year older than me. She hasn't gotten married yet. The more she stays, the less valuable she becomes. So why don't you keep this man for you to be your son? In law, she chuckled after speaking. Su Xu turned his head to look at Su's mother and spoke coldly. Let me remind you that trafficking in human beings is something you have to take to jail. Zhang Fun was given such a glance by her daughter, and she was stunned to see the meaning of the trial in her eyes. She quickly shook her hand and explained, I won't sell one by one. Li Demai was surprised by Su Xu's niece's name and surname, and for a while, she suddenly felt offended. She was so angry that her hands were on her hips, and her voice was so loud that it could almost lift the roof. Su Xu, are you uncivilized? Do you call your elders names like that? I think you're going crazy. Li Demi I cursed loudly, thank you for reading so many years and still graduating from high school. Can you speak? Why did you just sell people? It's just giving a child that we can't afford to raise to someone else. You just turn your elbow out and don't care about your mother at all, Li Demei looked at Su Xu, who had gone crazy today, with a disdainful expression on her face. If you criticize me, I will pour it out as if I don't want money. What you pick up is what you pick up. No matter how you raise it, you won't be familiar with it. If it's biological, you will definitely feel sorry for your mother. Raising another child will be tiring. You didn't know your mother's health was not good the first day, otherwise it wouldn't be your turn as an unwanted wild seed to enjoy the Sioux family. You don't know how to feel sorry for your mother. Why should your mother treat your cousin like an old mother and serve her like a girl? Li Demai is not without a long brain. Her brain is working fine now, and every word is stirring up the relationship between these two mothers and daughters. Zhang Fen's expression didn't look very good as she listened. Li has been dealing with her sister Dotin Dot Law for almost 20 years, and at first glance, she knows that her sister Dotin Dot Law has heard what she just said, so she is very proud in her heart. Wave your hands and give orders. Let's talk about the girls' movie later. If the Liang family comes, Liang Zhenghua will arrive at the county town after 9 o'clock and make an appointment with you at the entrance of the cinema. You both have seen each other's photos and recognized each other. You must go and meet Liang Jingua. Also, if you're idle at home, go to me early and don't let others wait for you. Miss Li still had to go to work, so she put down her words and proudly turned around and left. Zhang Fun escorted Li Demei to the door. When Li Demei came downstairs, she frowned and turned to look at her daughter, scolding, You shouldn't talk to your aunt like this. It's too uncivilized. Uneducated. Su Xu was almost laughed to death by the mother of the original owner. She came to someone else's house early in the morning to give orders and instigate you to sell children and commit crimes. Is Li the most cultured of her sisters? Su Xu didn't get used to Zhang Fun, so he blurted out his words. Is Li calling out to others as a wild seed the most cultured? Su Xu was angry for the original owner. 
Yes, she was not Zhang Fen's original daughter Su Xu, but Su Xu, who had been an orphan for 23 years in the 21st century but suddenly inherited billions of assets. Today is Su Xu's second day wearing here. Su Xu doesn't know why he came here. In short, she slept soundly in the villa and woke up here. She had become Su Xu in 1977. And her villa also came in another way. She shares the same name and surname as the original owner, and even looks very similar. When she woke up, the original owner had not yet dissipated, and she was still desperately pleading with Su Xu to live for her, begging her to take good care of Su Lin Lin, the only daughter of her second uncle and aunt, who was also the cousin of Lee DeMay's girl film, nicknamed E.E., e., which was about to be sold. Su Xu is a person who lives better than to die. Since she can't go back, she has no reason not to agree to the original owner. After receiving her response, the original owner disappeared, and before disappearing, he even said thank you to her as if he was relieved of his burden. The things that Su Xu saw from the original owner's memory almost made her, who was so angry, unable to sleep well. More than a month ago, the father of the original owner, Su Jianqing, had an accident while on a business trip and disappeared. With Su Jianqing's departure, the Li family trembled and even became the head of the Su family. Just after Su Jianqing's seventh birthday, Li Damiai, who is an aunt, came to the original owner's house to mediate. Brainwash Zhang Fun and then notify the original owner to wait for the wedding. The man introduced by Li Damiai to the original owner is called Liang Zhenghua, who is seven years older than the original owner. The photo of the man is pressed down on the original owner's desk. From Su Xu's perspective, his appearance can definitely be described as tough and handsome. Liang Jingua joined the military at the age of 16. He is 27 years old and recently switched jobs due to injury. It is said that he has transferred to a certain farm and went to the countryside to cultivate and build rural areas. In the eyes of others, Liang Jingua's biggest problem is not his age, nor is he going to the countryside to farm. But it's a second marriage with two sons. Whoever marries in the past is a ready dot made mother, a hard working stepmother who doesn't please. The Great Demon King has posted a new article. Please support us all. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Dating and Meeting. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Dating and Meeting For these reasons, Miss Lee entrusted the marriage to the original owner. Otherwise, Li's daughter is older than the original owner and has not yet been engaged. If it were really good, how could Li be willing to give it to the original owner? Li Damiai's domineering behavior is not only reflected in her role as the head of the original owner's marriage. Even the original owner's job was taken by Li Bao Zhen, the son of Li Damiai. First, he lost his most respected father, then lost his job and was forced to marry a man who was much older in his second marriage. Seeing that he was about to lose control of his beloved cousin, the original owner became disheartened. Zhang Fen was speechless after being scolded several times by Su Xu, and it took him a while to speak lightly. Your aunt is also doing it for our mother's good, and her heart is good. As soon as Zhang Fen's words came out, Su Xu gave her a big white eye and turned to the next room. Who the hell is good for? Go to hell. The door was not locked and opened with just one twist. The little girl sitting on the bed had a pair of red eyes, obviously crying secretly. The little girl cried like a red-eyed rabbit, even people like Su Xu who thought they were cold-hearted and lung-cold felt heartbroken when they looked at her. Sister, Su Lin Lin on the bed couldn't help but shed tears when she saw the person coming in. She cried and asked, Does Auntie want to sell me? Li Demai's voice was loud, and Su Xu, who only fell asleep in the middle of the night, was awakened. Naturally, Su Lin Lin also heard the conversation outside. If she dares, I'll send her directly to get shot. Su Xu responded arrogantly and sat on the edge of the bed, reaching out to wipe the little girl's tears. Su Lin Lin is the only daughter of the original owner's second uncle and second aunt, and the couple were separated by several days last spring. After the couple disappeared, 
Su Lin Lin was initially taken over by her grandmother to be raised, but the elderly there had many children, with a total of more than ten children of all sizes. Su Lin Lin is her granddaughter, her parents are gone, and she is also a girl. It is inevitable that she will be neglected and bullied by immature children. Later, Su Jianqing and his wife went to visit their niece and found out, so they moved their only niece's household registration to their own home and raised her as an additional daughter. As long as there is no instigation from the Li family, Zhang Fun is also quite kind to Su Lin Lin, who cares and is willing to spend money. When Su Ershu and his wife were alive, they also showed great care and affection for the original owner. Before Su Lin Lin was born, the couple treated the original owner as a daughter and bought food for her. The Li family felt wronged for the original owner, and Su Jianqing was not at home. Su Ershu would help the original owner vent his anger. After the passing of Uncle Su and his wife, the original owner shifted his nostalgia for the two elders to his young cousin. Therefore, before the original owner left, the most reassuring thing was actually this cousin. Zhang Fun sulked in the living room for a while, but she still went to the kitchen to make breakfast for the two children in the room. After that, she shouted to the two sisters in the room to come out for breakfast, took off her apron and planned to go straight to work. Su Lin Lin followed Su Xu out of the room and saw that there were only two bowls on the table. The little girl advised wisely, Auntie, have breakfast before going to work. If you don't eat breakfast, you will feel hungry. The concern of children is not false, and Zhang Fun was softened by this caring advice. She turned her head to look at the child's red eyes before explaining, one by one, Auntie won't sell you. The little girl's words were somewhat urgent, Auntie, when I get older, I'll help Auntie with her work. Auntie is not an old lady, I don't need Auntie to take care of me, I can take care of myself. Zhang Fen glanced at her daughter who was already sitting at the dining table, taking care of her own meals, sighed, and reached out to touch her niece's head. She let out a sigh before sitting down to eat together. Su Xu harbored an uncontrollable anger toward Su's mother in his heart, having a meal without saying a word. Zhang Fen only treated her daughter as having a tantrum with her over marriage, and after finishing her meal, she confessed. Since we have already made an appointment, you should go see the other person first after dinner. Since they have already arrived, we cannot be impolite. Let's wait until you have met before discussing other matters. After explaining to Zhang Fun, she carried her bag and went to work. I cannot mention the fate of the original owner, which is full of emotions. The original owner was not the biological daughter of the Su family, but was found by a colleague of Su Jianqing's father during a business trip. Su's mother Zhang Fun was not in good health and could not have a child. After discussing, the couple adopted this baby girl. The fact that the original owner became the daughter of the Su family is actually fortunate, because neither Su Jianqing nor his wife are bad people and treat this daughter as their own. It's just that Su Jianqing is busy with work and often goes on business trips. The original owner was raised by his mother Zhang Fen alone. Zhang Fen is not bad either, she has soft ears and even values the family members who throw her out like a basin of water. And Zhang Fen's family members are truly corrupt and greedy. The original owner didn't know when he was a child that he was not the biological child of his parents. He deliberately said it when Zhang Fen Yang's family came to visit. The purpose is to make the original owner more witty not to compete with Zhang Baojian for things, and to prevent the original owner from really treating themselves as the daughter of the Su family. Zhang Fen is a person who doesn't distinguish between good and bad, but Su Jianqing is intelligent and has a temper. The Zhang family deliberately exposed the secret that Su Jianqing and his wife had been hiding from their children. Su Jianqing got angry and directly drove the Zhang family out, threatening not to let the Zhang family get closer to him. This made the Zhang family realize that Su Jianqing is not easy to deal with. Unfortunately, Su Jianqing was too busy. Although he doted on his daughter, he couldn't resist having a wife who was easily soft-hearted towards his mother and family. When Su Jianqing was present, the Zhang family dared not come. As soon as Su Jianqing was absent, 
the Zhang family would come to Su Jianqing to stir up trouble. In addition, with Zhang Fen being such an indecisive Baozi mother, the original owner was also developed into a submissive and cautious nature. Originally, with a father like Su Jianqing around, Su Xu's temperament would be soft, and Su Jianqing could also protect his daughter. He thought that in the future, he would find a husband with a good temper and character for his daughter, and that her daughter would live a peaceful life would be enough. Unexpectedly, things are unpredictable, but in the end, they have become what they are now. But Su Xu is not the original owner. She has never suffered a loss since she is so big. No one has ever taken any advantage of her before. After tidying up the dishes, Su Xu entrusted them one by one to his retired neighbor's grandmother downstairs to help take care of them, and then went out directly. In Su Xu's view, the small county town of the 1970s was fresh everywhere, with no vendors selling on the streets and very few cars. Most of the people passing by her were jingling bicycles and buses occasionally crossing the road. Pedestrians on the street don't dress too prominently, and everyone wears similar styles and colors. This is Su Xu's first leisurely walk on the street in 23 years, and every scene that catches her eye is like an old movie. By the time she walked all the way to the cinema entrance, it was already 9.30. At the entrance of the cinema stands a man who is over 1.8 meters tall. He stands tall and upright, and the security guard at the entrance of a certain unit across from him is not as upright as him. Su Xu stared at the man for a few seconds, and before she could take out the photo to compare and confirm, the man had already walked towards her. Comrade Su Xu, hello, I am Liang Jingguo. The man's voice is deep and surprisingly pleasant. Su Xu raised her eyebrows uncontrollably. Yo, this man himself is even more handsome than the photo, and his beautiful voice is also a bonus. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 No One Should Despise Anyone You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 No One Should Despise Anyone While Su Xu Was Observing Liang Jingguo, Liang Jingguo Was Also Observing This Blind Date Liang Jingguo Received A Letter From His Family While Recuperating In The Hospital, Stating That He Had Found A Blind Date To Inform Him To Come Back And Get Married. Yes, It Was To Inform Him To Come Back And Get Married and there was no intention of asking for his opinion. Liang Jingguo found out after asking his friends from his hometown for help that his blind date was arranged by his stepmother. The girl is not only fair and beautiful, but her father is also an engineer in a mechanical factory and her mother is an accountant in the factory. After graduating from high school, she worked as an accountant in a local textile factory and excelled in her job, earning praise from her colleagues. Under normal circumstances, for a girl from such a good family background, Liang Jingwa's stepmother could not arrange for him to be his wife. But the thing is so sad, the girl's father was unexpectedly gone, and the girl lost her greatest reliance. Liang Jingwa's friend told him in the letter that the girl's mother had a soft temper and had been fooled by her family. The girl's temper is the same as her mother's. She is indecisive, has a weak personality, speaks softly, and is very timid, so her marriage is decided by her uncle and aunt. The Zhang family is holding on to the dowry given by the Liang family, while the Liang stepmother is holding on to this stepson and daughter. In law, the two families merged and exchanged energy with each other. Liang Jingwa had no plans for this marriage at that time. He wouldn't want a daughter. In law, who was being held by his stepmother, and he didn't want his future life to be interfered with by his stepmother. But when he was discharged and went to his nominal son's grandmother's house, Liang Jingwa changed his mind after seeing his two registered sons. The two children did not live well at their own grandmother's house, and the child's mother left them and took away the compensation money exchanged by the child's biological father's life. When Liang Jingwa saw two children, they were starving and emaciated, and they were particularly cruel to people. At that time, Liang Jingwa knew that he didn't want his comrade's two children to be abandoned like this, so he had to take the children to his side to raise them. But as an old man, how could he raise children and not find a mother for them? What if I find someone with a big temper and a bad heart, 
and he doesn't take care of anyone. It is not uncommon for his stepmother to abuse his child, and he himself has also suffered losses under her control. So Liang Jingua thought of Su Xu, who had a soft and indecisive personality. It's good to be timid. Only when timid dare not abuse children behind his back. At this moment, Liang Jingua is observing the blind date in front of her. Unlike the photo with two long braids, she just tied her hair at the back of her head today. A pair of agile and spirited eyes, Liang Jingua never dodges or dodges when looking at people. He has not found any timidity or cowardice in these eyes. Do you have anything to ask? Liang Jingua took the lead in asking, interrupting the girl's gaze that had been staring at his face. Su Xu then withdrew his slightly presumptuous gaze and nodded without hesitation, yes. And there are also many more. What she needs to think about is what to ask first. May I ask why you divorced before? Since it's not a widowhood, Su Xu attaches great importance to this issue. A man who commits domestic violence is not good at first, no matter how good dot looking he is. She ran away with a wealthy person, it is said to have gone to the port city. Liang Jingua replied. This answer made Su Xu look at Liang Jingua's inch size with a hint of green. Su Xu nodded and simply asked the remaining questions in one go. I have a lot of questions. If I ask them all at once, you can answer them one by one. Su Xu spoke confidently, Are you hitting women? How old are your two sons? Why didn't you bring them together this time? I heard you've been discharged from the military and now you're on a farm. I've already agreed that I don't know how to farm, so don't expect me to help with it faced with the first time meeting a boy, her problem was throwing them out one after another, speaking fluently, without stuttering at all, and without any hesitation. Liang Jingwa suddenly realized that his friend's claim that this girl was timid was mostly due to rumors. He has seen how timid people talk to strangers, but it's not like Su Xu's witty words. I don't differentiate between genders when I hit people, I only use my nature. I hit bad people, those who deserve to be hit, female criminals, female spies, and so on. Even if it's a woman, I can still hit them correctly. I sent my two children to the neighboring county's grandmother's house before returning to the city yesterday. I will pick them up when I am ready to go back to the farm. The farm I am currently on has been transformed from a county town into a large farm, and I live in the city. Even if you know how to farm, you won't have the land to grow it for me. Liang Jingwa was very strict, every word was powerful, and his tone seemed a bit stiff, not like chatting, but more like giving a report. Su Xu listened interestingly, her eyes curved, and then asked again, what do you have for your wife? Liang Jingwa, who had never been with anyone before, was momentarily stunned by Su Xu's smile and a sentence jumped out of his mind. This girl looks really beautiful when she smiles. After Su Xu asked again, Liang Jingwa realized and responded directly, don't abuse children. Su Xu understood Liang Jingwa's answer very well. After all, Liang Jingwa has two sons, and the fear of his stepmother abusing his stepson as a father also indicates that Liang Jingwa is a responsible father. This is much better than those who have stepmothers and stepfathers. Su Xu doesn't want to stay here. She has a much different personality from the original owner, and she can't hold back her temper. She gets along with people familiar to the original owner, and her abnormality is easily discovered. Being away from those familiar with the original owner is Su Xu's first choice. Another point is that the mother of the original owner has a soft bun personality, and there is also a picky uncle's family. Even if Su Xu dismissed Liang Jingua in front of her, Li Demai could still find Zhou Jingua and Li Jingua to pass on to her from elsewhere. Endless, Su Xu also found it annoying. She was too lazy to deal with the original owner's troublemaker and Uncle Jing's family, but with Zhang Fen present, it was impossible to break ties, so the best way was not to stay here. But now it's 1977. If you want to leave here and don't want to go to the countryside to endure hardship, there is no better way than to find someone to marry. 
It was precisely because of the idea of getting married that Su Xu came to see Liang Jingua today. Thinking of this, Su Xu glanced at Liang Jingua again. Of course, after seeing this person, Liang Jingua's face first moved her. Anyway, it's all about getting married. If you marry someone who looks good, at least you can still cook, right? I've finished asking you everything I want to ask you. Now let me share my requirements. After listening, if you think it's okay, then we'll get married. If you don't think it's okay, then we'll go back to our respective homes and look for our mothers. Su Xu's straightforward statement that we would get married startled Liang Jingua, and he thought to himself, who was the blind one who spread this? Is this girl timid and indecisive? The word marriage came out of her little girl's mouth without any hesitation, which made Liang Jingua feel inferior. You say. Liang Jingua really wants to hear what indecisive words the timid blind date can say now. Let me start with the first point. If you think it's okay, I'll continue. If you don't agree, then there's no need to waste our time. Su Xu glanced at Liang Jingua's expression before continuing. After getting married, I will live with my cousin. She is five years old and very well behaved. You have two sons, and I have my cousin. We are three on two, and no one should dislike each other. Speaking of which, Su Xu stopped and waited for Liang Jingua to make a statement. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Let's Get Married You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Let's Get Married When Su Xu decided to leave this place through marriage, she had already planned that the prerequisite for getting married was to leave with the original owner's cousin. Zhang Fun is not a bad person, but her ears are soft. When the wind blows in her family's ear, they say whatever they want. The Zhang family is not satisfied with the original owner, especially with Su Xu's cousin. If Su Xu leaves on her own, the original owner's cousin will sooner or later be persuaded to sell by Li Demei. So Su Xu thought, it's not bad to find a second marriage with children. He has two sons, and she has a cousin. Don't despise either of them. Su Xu really thought Yang Jingguo was good, so she wanted to work hard to facilitate their marriage, so she explained again. If I leave my cousin at home, she will be sold by my aunt. My second uncle and aunt loved me a lot during their lifetime, and they only have one daughter. I must take her with me. Being grateful and grateful, you are indeed good. Liang Jingguo had not yet insisted on Su Xu, but upon hearing Su Xu's explanation, he knew that he had come the right way. The person who brings their cousin around must be a kind person, and kind people will definitely not abuse children. I agree, Liang Jingguo agreed. My family is also five years old this year, the same age as your cousin. It happens that the three children have a companion and grew up together, making it more lively. However, it will be harder for you to take care of the three children all at once. Su Xu smiled. Herding sheep one sheep is released, and three sheep are also released. Su Xu smiled with curved eyebrows and eyes, giving the impression of being well behaved and innocent. Liang Jingguo was also confused by her smile and set a wrong label for Su Xu in his heart, believing that she was indeed a kind and gentle girl, as stated in his friend's letter. Do you have any further requests to continue? Liang Jingguo's tone softened a lot. Before you came back, your mother came to see me once. She told me that after getting married, I will stay at home in the city with my child. I don't agree with this. Being married and living separately is not good for children and the relationship between husband and wife. If we get married, I will follow you to the farm. I don't agree to stay in the city with your family and your child. If we don't agree, then we'll each go back to our own homes and find our own mothers. No one wants to live with their in-laws, let alone their husband who is not by their side. And she also had to live with her two stepsons, cousin, and in-laws, and Su Xu refused to even beat her to death. I didn't originally plan to keep you in the city. I'm on the farm, so naturally you followed me to live on the farm. 
Liang Jingwe didn't know that his stepmother had even told Su Xu about this. But when he returned home this time, even his room was a very small guest room hastily arranged by the nanny after he arrived. Liang Jingwe didn't feel at all that the family was about to accept new members. Moreover, Liang Jingwe never lived in that family for a few days from childhood to adulthood, and in his eyes, it was not his home either. Also, if three children live together, it's inevitable that there will be arguments and fights in the future. You can't pull off the side. Let's first say that when I educate my children, you can't talk about me on the side. After we get married, under no circumstances can you take action against me and E. Ugly words come first. If you dare to take action against me and E, I will immediately take them with me, and there is absolutely no room for negotiation. Liang Jinghua only considered for a few seconds before nodding his head, the previous one is that Su Xu's kind and gentle personality will not abuse children, and there is no need for him to be biased. The latter point is that he feels it is impossible for him to take action against his wife and sister. In law. He also didn't notice Su Xu's warm water stewing of frogs, and his request was a routine that came one after another. At this moment, Liang Jingwa's answer was very confident, but he did not expect that in the future, this gentle wife would repeatedly drive him crazy, not willing to beat him, not willing to scold him, not willing to argue, and could make him angry to death. Seeing Liang Jingwa nod, Su Xu smiled contentedly and then asked, Do you have anything to ask me? I thought Liang Jingwa would ask some questions, such as her preferences, temperament, personality, and so on. Unexpectedly, this person shook their head and replied to her, No. Okay, if not, then not. Anyway, he doesn't have any problems and doesn't hinder her from continuing to ask. How many more days can you stay at home when you come back this time? Liang Jingwa felt quite embarrassed at the moment. Plus, I can still stay for four days today. My child is at my grandmother's house, so I have to go pick him up before I go back. It will take several more days on the way back to the farm. After Liang Jingwa was discharged from the hospital, his unit gave him a 20-day leave. But he went to see his old comrades in arms, picked up the children, and returned to his hometown. There was not much time left for him to stay in his hometown. For days, Su Xu thought for a moment and took out a paper, brush, and brush from her bag, writing down her home address. While writing, he said, in the afternoon, I will go and issue all the necessary certificates. Tomorrow morning, you come to my house to pick me up, and then we will go and collect the certificates. After obtaining the certificate, I need to go to the supply and marketing cooperative to buy some candies, buy more, and distribute them to my neighbors. I also need to go to my original workplace to distribute them to my colleagues. This sentence is reminding Liang Jingwa to remember to bring money and tickets tomorrow morning. Speaking of which, Su Xuxua quickly tore the paper off the notebook and handed it to Liang Jingwa. Looking up at him, after dividing the sugar, we can go back to the city. Meet your family and stay in the city for the night. We'll go pick up the child the day after tomorrow. Seeing Liang Jingwa confused, Su Xu stuffed the paper directly into Liang Jingwa's hand. The old man is old, and we are so far away from home in the future, so we can't always accompany the old man. If you want, you can stay at your grandma's house on the fourth day. Of course, if you want to return to the farm early and arrive a day earlier, you can clean up your place of residence, and we can also return a day earlier. Su Xu arranged the remaining four days of Liang Jingwa in an orderly manner, and after finishing, she explained it again. Tomorrow, remember to bring the 200 yuan dowry money that was previously agreed upon. Just give it to me directly, you don't have to give it to my mother. After speaking, Su Xu stared at Liang Jingwa for more than 10 seconds. When he didn't say anything, he thought he had no objections to express. He waved his hand and said to Liang Jingwa, see you tomorrow. Then he turned around and left. Liang Jingwa regained his senses, and Su Xu had already boarded the bus, with no one in sight. It is obvious that this is a girl who is not only not timid, but also a bit tiger in nature. 
For the first time at such a young age, Liang Jinguo was led by the nose throughout the journey. He even doubted whether the girl would regret being hasty after sleeping tonight. Tomorrow he will come to pick up someone, can he really marry them back home? On Su Xu's side, he took a bus with a sense of the times and strolled all the way to the textile factory station. At the station, Su Xu didn't rush to the factory, but found an empty place to enter the big villa that came with her. On the first day she wore it, Su Xu discovered that the large villa she inherited had come with her. As long as Su Xu thinks about entering the villa in a deserted place, he can come back alone. After several experiments, it was found that she could stay here for five minutes each time she came in, with an hour interval between her next visits. She can take out everything in the villa, but as soon as she leaves the villa, everything will appear in her hands in a way that suits that era. And she couldn't take out things that didn't exist in that era. For example, emerging technology products such as mobile phones, treadmills, and so on. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Muddy He Doesn't Deserve It You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Muddy He Doesn't Deserve It In The Villa, Su Xu Can Still Use Her Phone To Surf The Internet. But she couldn't walk out of the villa door. She can even order takeout and shop online on her phone. The things she buys will immediately appear in her villa after placing the order. This strengthened Su Xu's determination to continue being a salted fish. Anyway, if she had this villa, she couldn't starve or freeze to death. She was able to make such an easy decision to marry Liang Chun Kuo precisely because of this confidence, so she harbored the idea of divorce if she found that her life after marriage was not comfortable. As long as we spend these few years, divorced Su Xu can make a living with her cousin by inheriting these huge legacies. Su Xu only stayed in the villa for more than ten seconds, and when he came out again, he had an extra bag of apples in his hand, weighing about three or four pounds. She carried this bag of apples into the textile factory. The security guard in the factory recognized Su Xu and greeted her with a smile. Accountant Xiao Su, I haven't seen you come to work these two days. I heard you gave your work to your cousin. Su Xu smiled but remained silent, nodded, and chatted with the security guard before leaving. It's just such a coincidence that Su Xu just walked in and saw Zhang Bao Jian with both hands in his pockets, walking unsteadily. This point is not in the office but wandering around here, indicating that Zhang Bao Jian is just a pile of mud that cannot be supported by the wall. Su Xu, what are you doing here? Zhang Baogun's face changed dramatically when he saw Su Xu. The disgust and dissatisfaction were directly displayed on the face, with a hint of tension between these two emotions. Now that I am working here, you have nothing to do with our textile factory anymore. Why did the security guard let you, this idle person, in? Zhang Baojian is worried that Su Xu will come alone at this time because he has taken care of her work, and he is afraid that Su Xu will turn back and come to the company to cause trouble. So Zhang Baojian anxiously stated that Su Xu had no relationship with the textile factory anymore, and now Su Xu is just an outsider to the textile factory. Seeing Su Xu staring at him silently, Zhang Baojian felt even more confident when he thought of Su Xu's bullying nature, just like her mother's. My mom said, you're getting married soon, and getting married is like splashing water. How can you let an outsider take over our Zhang family's things? Zhang Baojian said, calling for security to come and drive people away. Su Xu sneered and said, what are you nervous about? I'm just here to do the final handover work, and by the way, let's take a look at Huang Jie who has been taking good care of me since I first started working in the factory. What idle people, what spilled water, what outsiders, Zhang's things. These words made Su Xu laugh in his heart as if he were listening to a joke. The original Su Xu was very afraid of Zhang Baojian, after all, Zhang Baojian was spoiled by the Zhang family and was unreasonable. He loved to steal Su Xu's things and always bullied him. But now it's her. Su Xu Chang has never seen anyone more domineering than her since she was so old. Zhang Baogun's point is not enough for her to see. 
But when dealing with Zhang Baojian, Su Xu doesn't need to be arrogant. After all, when she can reason, she still likes to reason with people. Of course, this truth naturally needs to be told to those who reason, not to Zhang Baojian, who is a mess. Upon hearing that Su Xu was here to handle the handover of work, Zhang Baojian didn't have any doubts about this mess, and even felt happy about Su Xu's intelligence. He waved his hand and urged, hurry up and get married. I also talked about a partner in the factory yesterday, and it won't be long before we get married. I'm still waiting for the money to be used. Anyway, whoever you marry is married, don't procrastinate. After urging Su Shua Bao Jen, he confidently left the factory, unsure of where he was going to play during working hours. Su Xu was disgusted by Zhang Baogun's back and carried an apple to the office on his own. The original owner had a good temper, was enthusiastic about helping colleagues in the workplace, and had strong work abilities, so her popularity in the office was very good. She gets along well with people of all ages. So much so that Su Xu was warmly welcomed by everyone when he appeared in the office. Accountant Su, have you returned to work? I heard you gave your job to your cousin. Is that true? You can come back quickly, Zhang Baojian is really not a good accountant. Yeah, he's a stupid person. He taught the same thing several times but couldn't teach it. We haven't even gotten angry yet. He has a bigger temper than us. He just said a few words to us, gave us a cold shoulder, threw his sleeves, and left. We don't know where he went now. Su Xu had only been away from her position for two days, but the office was filled with complaints about Zhang Baogun's presence, causing everyone to suffer one after another in front of Su Xu. Su Xu switched in a second, and at this moment, she was seen by everyone as the timid little girl. I'm sorry. I really can't do anything about it. Wei Yu shed tears first, and this pitiful and helpless look immediately made people feel heartbroken. Everyone stopped complaining and sighed instead. Everyone has been a colleague for many years, and the county town is just so big. Everyone knows about the situation of the Su family. There is no need to ask too much, every family has its own difficult scriptures to recite. The Su Xu family is probably the most difficult to read. Director Huang happened to pass by at this moment, and what rushed into her ears were sighs and the name Su Xu. She fixed her eyes and indeed Su Xu had arrived. She stood at the door and shouted to Su Xu, Su Xu, you came just in time. Come here. Su Xu responded well, whispered and thanked her comforting colleagues, and followed Huang Jia out of the office alone. The two of them didn't walk far, so they went to the data room next door, which was currently empty. How are you going to arrange your work? That morning, when you didn't come to the factory, your mother brought Zhang Baojian and said, your cousin Zhang Baojian will take over your work in the future, and then she left Zhang Baojian behind and went back. Huang Jie really has a headache for Zhang Baojian. After observing for these two days, it was found that Zhang Baojian is not suitable for the job of an accountant. If you are sure you want to give him the job, the factory will transfer Zhang Baojian to be responsible for loading and unloading, and the wages and subsidies of the loading and unloading workers will be different from those of an accountant. Huang Jia and Su Xu said so much just to persuade Su Xu. Changing from an accountant's job to a loading and unloading worker's job is not cost-effective at all. If you do a good job, you may still win the factory award this year. It's really a pity that your family replaced you. Thank you, Sister Huang. Su Xu suppressed the tears that might no longer exist at the corner of her eyes, showing a very helpless expression and gently shook her head. Then, pretending to be strong, he smiled and handed the apple he had been holding for a long time. Sister Huang, I owe it to you for taking care of me in the factory these years. I just came in and you took it with you hand in hand. I am very grateful to you. This apple is not a valuable thing, and you should not refuse if you don't dislike it. It is my kindness and my gratitude to you. As a qualified social animal, Su Xu is better at speaking than anyone else. 
Without giving Huang a chance to refuse, Su Xu put something in Huang's hand and immediately changed the topic. Huang Jia, I'm not afraid of you laughing about our family's affairs. I also feel that I'm losing this job to Zhang Baojian. When my dad was still around, the ones he hated the most were the Zhang Baojian family. It was not until my dad left that he helped me secure this job. I was cheap, and no one would be cheap to Zhang Baojian. He didn't deserve it. Upon hearing this, Huang nodded incessantly and said, Oh. Yes. That's the truth. The Great Demon King has posted a new article, please support us. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Selling Work You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Selling Work Huang thought to herself, Su Xu is a good child, listen to advice. Before, I used to look weak and deceitful, but when things really get tough, I can handle them. Huang Jie, if nothing unexpected happens, I will get married tomorrow. However, this matter is still uncertain until tomorrow. Please don't disclose this matter to the public yet. Mainly afraid that Liang Jingguo would stand her up. Judging from his appearance, it seems like he was a bit scared by her today. Su Xu blushed and said, I came to see you today. There is one more thing I would like to ask for your help to inquire. Huang was stunned for a few seconds before repeatedly saying, You tell me. My mother has the same temperament as me, she is not someone who can argue or make a fuss. Zhang Baojian and his family are unreasonable, and they care about my work. If my mother doesn't help me, I will definitely not be able to survive on my own. Upon hearing this, Sister Huang also sighed. I happen to be living out of town with my husband after getting married, so Huang Jia, could you help me inquire if anyone wants to buy a job? I plan to sell my job. I can sign an agreement. After I leave, if Zhang Baojian gets into trouble, the factory can have someone drive him out directly. The job these days is the most valuable, and formal workers are like iron rice bowls. Huang Jie had not even had time to digest the news of Su Xu getting married and going out of town, but was immediately knocked unconscious by the news of Su Xu selling her job. She looked surprised and said, That's a great idea. Huang excitedly patted her thigh and said, It's useless for anyone to argue after signing the agreement. The next second he asked again, How much do you plan to ask for? You don't have to ask anyone else for information. My niece has been worried about work lately. Huang's niece has been unemployed at home for two years since graduating from high school, and if she doesn't find another class, she will have to go to the countryside. But there is only one daughter in the family, who would be willing to go to an unfamiliar place to endure hardship alone. But every position in a unit is like a carrot or a pit. Even for temporary workers, if there is a spot, it is still being watched, coaxed and snatched by a group of people. Whoever has the ability will fall on whoever has it. The title of Director Huang may sound impressive, but she actually doesn't have much real power. She only manages these few people in the office and doesn't have the ability to rely on her to push her niece into the factory alone. For Su Xu, if she wants to sell her job, it means that when she dozes off, the pillow is delivered to her hand. Su Xu also smiled, and she knew that there hasn't been a young person in a hurry for employment in any family these days. Since it's Huang, your niece, who wants it, you can just watch and give it to me. I don't want much money, I just want to work and not give it to Zhang Baojian. I feel relieved. Although that's the case, Huang Jia is also embarrassed to take advantage of Su Xu. So, I'll make it up to my niece's family to raise a thousand yuan for you. Huang Jie was afraid of taking advantage of Su Xu, so she offered this price very conscientiously. If this matter is revealed, Huang Jie is not afraid of losing heart. That's it, thank you, Sister Huang. Su Xu was shocked in her heart. This is only 1977, a thousand yuan is a huge sum of money. You should know that Sister Li was eager to force the original owner to marry for the dowry money of 200 yuan from the Liang family. It can be seen that Huang Jie is indeed an authentic person, 
so Su Xu found a pen and paper and wrote the agreement happily. Sign and press the fingerprint, then follow Su Xu to find other leaders in the factory to implement this matter. Su Xu kept a secret and specifically instructed the informed individuals to wait a few days for Huang's niece to report on the matter at work before revealing it. This saved her the energy to deal with the Zhang Baojian family. Huang Jia was generous with her money, and Su Xu signed the agreement happily. The two agreed that Su Xu would come to the unit the next day to ask Huang Jia for money, and Su Xu left the textile factory satisfied. At noon, Zhang Fen has an hour and a half lunch break. During lunch, Su Xu couldn't help but be asked by Zhang Fen about the meeting with Liang Jinghua in the morning. Su Xu didn't want to be disturbed by the Zhang family tomorrow, and she knew that Zhang Fen couldn't hide anything from the Zhang family, so she didn't say anything about her decision to obtain the certificate with Liang Jinghua tomorrow. No surprise to Su Xu. In the afternoon, she ran through the procedures and completed the necessary documents. When she returned home, she happened to meet Li and Zhang Fen talking downstairs. Li asked about the situation between Su Xu and Liang Jinghua, and learned from Zhang Fen that Su Xu had a good impression when they first met. Li was satisfied. The girl's family is quite big now. After seeing her twice, she almost settled her marriage. Don't hold on to the heirs and ask the man to hold and coax her. If they don't want her then they will know how embarrassing it will be. After Li finished speaking, she turned her head and found Su Xu standing a few steps behind her, looking at her. She scolded Su Xu for pretending to be a ghost and intentionally scaring people during the day. After cursing her, she rushed home to cook for the Zhang family, got on her bike, and hurriedly left. Don't do anything wrong during the day, and don't be afraid of ghosts knocking on the door at night. Su Xu let out a disdainful moan towards Li De Mei's distant back, shouting at Zhang Fen who was about to preach to her. She lifted her step and went upstairs home first. Zhang Fen slowed down Su Xu a few steps and hung her bag on the nail at the door, but couldn't help but say a word to Su Xu. Next time, don't do this anymore. If you make your aunt unhappy, she will talk about you again. Su Xu rolled his eyes in the chair and retorted. What did she mean? I didn't even curse like her. Besides, do I have no mother myself or what? It's her turn, Miss Li, to say about me. Su Xu looked at Zhang Fun, who was frowning and looking at her, and continued, she just didn't take you seriously, so she thought I didn't have a mother and that she should be meddling. Without giving Zhang Fen the opportunity to explain for Li Demai, Su Xu directly threw Zhang Fen the news that she was going to get married tomorrow, which immediately blinded her. She stood motionless and watched her for a long time without coming back to her senses. Tomorrow morning, Liang Jinghua and I will collect the certificate. After we finish, I will go to the city with him, Su Xu added. Zhang Fen just regained her senses and her voice became a bit sharp. Why is it so sudden? We only met today and we will collect the certificate tomorrow. You haven't even received it yet for everyone to see, nor have you been engaged or hired. Why did you suddenly need to collect the certificate? Zhang Fen walked a few steps to Su Xu and reached out to grab her wrist with force. What should you do with your banquets? Go to the city to do it. Don't you do it in the county. Why are you like this? Every time you say something, it's different from what you used to do. Zhang Fen was really anxious, and her speech became faster and faster. She even slapped Su Xu's arm twice. Miss Li just said to let me meet twice and make a decision. She told me not to hold on, so that I wouldn't lose face if they don't want me anymore. Didn't you argue? Isn't that what you think if you don't argue? Su Xu lowered her gaze and glanced at the wrist that was being held in pain. Zhang Fen was so shocked that she had such great strength. What kind of banquet should I hold? My dad just left, and my wedding banquet is so festive and lively, is it decent? Besides, he's a second married person, and he doesn't mind holding a wedding banquet. I don't know if Liang Jinghua will handle it or not, but she definitely won't handle it here at her mother's house. 
Moreover, Su Xu felt that after Liang Jinghua returned to the city, he didn't have time to drink. Apart from the time on the way, he only had four days left. I still have to go to his grandmother's house to pick up the child, and the remaining four days are not enough. After thinking for a moment, Su Xu added, I'm not willing to do it either. I don't want to see people I don't want to see on my big day. Zhang Fen's eyes turned red, and she couldn't tell whether she was angry or wronged by her daughter's words. Su Xu, who has been accustomed to being alone since childhood, is not someone who can be heartbroken. Seeing Zhang Fen's appearance, she didn't have the heart to comfort her, but continued to talk about her marriage. End of this chapter Chapter 7 The Dowry of Father's Love Like a Mountain You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 The Dowry of Father's Love Like a Mountain I have already agreed with Liang Jinghua about getting married. Before I met him, didn't you also oppose this marriage? Didn't you also urge me to meet him? Does this mean that you agree with my marriage to Liang Jinghua? Of course, Su Xu knew that her words were a bit heart-wrenching for Zhang Fen, but these things were indeed done by Zhang Fen as a mother. Zhang Fen's repeated appeasement with the Zhang family was the last straw that crushed the original owner. At this moment, Zhang Fen knew how to express her dissatisfaction with her daughter, but when she approached Li, she became mute and didn't know how to protect her daughter at all. So for a mother like Zhang Fen, her words are too gentle, too pleasant to listen to, useless, and will only make her never know how to be clear and introspective. Zhang Fen was speechless and stood there lost in thought. By the way, I told Liang Jinghua that the dowry should be given directly to me, Su Xu said, suddenly pausing and observing Zhang Fen. Ask her, do you really plan to use my dowry to marry Zhang Baojian? Do you really want to sell your daughter to exchange for a niece? Upon hearing this, Zhang Fen waved her hand repeatedly to deny it. Su Xu tugged at the corner of his mouth, but his expression didn't explain whether he believed it or not. She just casually continued, as for the dowry, I never expected you to give me any dowry, after all, I Su Xu is an outsider in the eyes of your Zhang family. This Zhang family member, including Zhang Fen, in a very light sentence, Su Xu did think so. Unexpectedly, Zhang Fen whispered, Your father and I have saved up a dowry for you for over a decade. You are getting married, and the dowry we have saved up for you will naturally be given to you. Zhang Fen's eyes turned red when she said this. Su Xu was very surprised, and can you save enough money in your hands not to be fooled by the Zhang family? In fact, Zhang Fen knew many things in her heart. It was just that when a couple from the Zhang family heard someone say a few words and cried out for pity, her heart softened. So she did know that Su Xu was right, and she basically paid her salary to her parents. But the dowry she and her husband saved for their daughter is unknown to anyone except her and her husband. I have promised your father that I will never tell anyone about saving your dowry, only your father and I know. When mentioning her deceased husband, Zhang Fen couldn't help but shed tears. Her husband is the spiritual pillar of Zhang Fen in this world. Without her husband, her world seems to collapse suddenly. Until now, she is still in a state of confusion, always feeling like a daydream that has not yet awakened. Zhang Fen wiped her tears and entered the bedroom. When she came out again, she held a passbook in her hand. From the day you were raised, your father said he would work hard to save a dowry for his precious daughter in the future. This is what your father and I have saved for you over the years. Su Xu took it over and opened it, shocked by the dense numbers on it. The money in the passbook is deposited one by one. From one or two yuan at the beginning, to five or six yuan at the end, and then to several tens at the end. The maximum amount is only around 80 yuan. Save three times a year, sometimes four or five times. Over the past decade, I have actually saved over 1,500 yuan. Excuse me, which girl can have a dowry of 1,500 yuan these days? Your father said that when you get married, you should quietly give it to you, not be known by outsiders, not reveal your wealth, not even your husband. 
Zhang Fen cried as she recalled the words her husband had explained to her when they were saving money together. It was precisely because of Su Jianqing's occasional instructions that Zhang Fen did not reveal a word to the Zhang family about this money. The money in the passbook was saved by the couple through frugality, and every deposit is a love for their daughter. So, the original owner is happy. Unfortunately, Su Jianqing left early, leaving the family without a backbone. Without Su Jianqing, Zhang Fen was more easily grasped by the Zhang family. Su Xu grew up in an orphanage from the moment she remembered it. It was after the old man passed away that her lawyer approached her and allowed her to inherit the old man's estate. Only then did she see her biological parents through photos. The old man didn't like her mother, so he didn't treat her well. He didn't want to see her when he was alive, so for over a decade, even though he knew that his granddaughter had grown up in an orphanage and was struggling to survive, he didn't take her home. With so many children in the orphanage, teachers and aunts may not be as dedicated. So, Su Xu never felt the love from her family from beginning to end. But at this moment, she felt for the original owner. Deposit after deposit, full of endless love from parents. If Zhang Fen were to argue for something, she wouldn't be so weak. The original owner would probably be the happiest girl in the world. Zhang Fun gave her daughter the love of being a mother, but this love was excluded from protection, so she also caused the greatest harm to the original owner. Zhang Fun is still rambling on about what her husband has said before. For example, how much money should I spend on buying good furniture for my daughter, and what kind of bracelet should I buy for my daughter? The more you say, the faster your tears fall. Su Xu considered herself a person with a heart of stone, and seeing her like this, she couldn't help but sigh. Thank you, said Su Xu on behalf of the original owner. Zhang Fen shook her head gently and said, Your father and I are the only child like you. Su Xu did not refuse and calmly took the passbook. Some words may not be appropriate to say at this moment, but Su Xu still has to say them. Mom, Liang Zhengua and I have agreed that I will take Yi and live with Yi in the future. Liang Zhengua's two sons are about the same age as Yi, and his three children also have companions. Su Xu paused for a few seconds to give Zhang Fen time to react. So, please give me the one by one passbook together, and I will lead one by one in the future. One by one, who had been hesitant to speak and huddled aside to minimize their presence, looked at Su Xu in surprise upon hearing this sentence. The little girl's wet eyes were filled with surprises. The little girl was very scared when she heard that her cousin was getting married and leaving tomorrow. Compared to living with her aunt, the little girl clearly prefers to be with her cousin. Even if she followed her cousin to a strange place, as long as she was there, the little girl felt at ease no matter where she went. Shu Shu, are you leaving mom alone? Zhang Fen's voice was raised a bit, I couldn't believe my ears. Mom, although the words may not sound good, I still have to say that I'm not confident in leaving you to take care of each one, Su Xu said straightforwardly without wanting to beat around the bush. Li Demai has already planned to sell them one by one. Don't say you didn't agree. If you didn't immediately object and Li Demai said these words, it means you had this idea in mind. Just a few words of provocation from Miss Li will make you tempted, and you will feel that what Miss Li said is right. You always think that the Zhang family is your mother's family and won't harm you. The Zhang family has their own reasons for everything they do, and they always do it for their own good. I don't want to suddenly hear the news that E has been sold. My uncle and aunt are just such a child. They were so kind to me when they were alive, and I have to protect E to be right to my uncle and aunt, and to be right to my father. So, I will never leave one by one here. Anyway, I have already agreed with Liang Jingua, and he has also agreed. When Zhang Fen is good, she is very good, but when the Zhang family comes, she reverts to her old ways and follows the Zhang family's tricks, always making her popular. Here is a great demon king with a strong desire for survival. Comrade Su Xu himself is very wealthy. I am afraid that the gang spirit will say that the female lead is greedy for money. 
temporarily updating 4,000 words per day, which means two chapters. End of this chapter. Chapter 8, Am I Coming Early? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8, Am I Coming Early? Sue Shu's words were too direct, her eyes were a bit vague, and she felt embarrassed because Su Shu had a few words that really hit her heart. On the other hand, one by one, upon hearing the passbook, he turned his head and ran into Su Shu's room. After flipping through it, he quickly ran out and handed the passbook to Su Shu with his feet on it. Sister, uncle asked me to keep my passbook and said I will use it when I grow up. I will give it to sister, sister. The five-year-old girl didn't know what this money meant to her. She just trusted Su Shu very much, and when she heard Su Shu mention this, she didn't hesitate to take it out. Su Shu only knew that there was such a passbook, but he didn't know that Su Jianqing would entrust such an important thing as the passbook to such a young child for safekeeping. It can be seen that Su Jianqing is indeed a rare and good uncle. I picked up my niece, but I didn't think about touching any of the things my younger brother left for the child. I will temporarily help you keep it, and I will return it to you when we arrive at our new home. You will still keep it for yourself in the future. Su Xu rubbed the little girl's head and said, Go pack your things. We'll leave tomorrow morning when your brother dot in dot law arrives. Nodding vigorously one by one, happily bouncing back to the room. Children's emotions come and go quickly, and they are easily distracted by other things, but as adults, Zhang Fen does not have such good self-regulation ability. Once you two leave, I'll be the only one left, she said hoarsely, when you were persuaded by sisterly to marry me and send me off one by one, I thought you were already mentally prepared to live alone in the future. Su Xu raised his eyebrows, which could be described as a heart-piercing knife. But it's not enough. What needs to be reminded, Su Xu still has to be reminded. After I leave with you one by one, I guess the Zhang family will definitely say they want to move in with you on the grounds that you live here alone, which is very lonely. Su Xu asked Zhang Fun, we only have two rooms in our house. Guess where they will let you, the owner, live when the whole family moves in. Zhang Bao Zhen is getting married soon, and his wife will also live with him. I guess you can't even sleep on the living room sofa. Then you also have to work as a cow and a horse for them, do laundry and cook as slaves for their whole family, and they think you should do anything. Oh, they spend your salary, eat the food you make, wear the clothes you wash, and live in your and my dad's house. Then they will blame you for not having enough skills to earn them a big house to live in comfortably. Then I felt like you were of little use, so I told you that it was inconvenient for you to live alone with their family, and I asked you to move out. As for letting you move out and where you can live, they won't care, and even their empty house in the village won't be vacated for you to live in. If you ask them where you moved out and where you live, they will only say it's your business. The water splashed out by your married daughter, where you live, what's their business? After they kicked you out, they took possession of everything you and my dad had, sold everything that could be sold for money, and threw away anything that couldn't be sold as garbage. The relics left by my dad that you carefully treasure can be seen in others' homes or garbage dumps in the future. Zhang Fen's face turned slightly pale as she kept shaking her head to defend the Zhang family, they wouldn't do this to me. They just care about your money so much. Do you think they are thinking about you as a family member when they interact with you? Will they do this? It depends on whether they will behave like I told you after I leave with them one by one. Su Xu made it clear to Zhang Fen that everything the Zhang family would do in the future would be done. Although this house is nominally allocated to you and dad, if it weren't for dad's sake, you wouldn't have been able to get such a two-bedroom apartment. My dad left, and you can continue to live in the house, but if I know that the Zhang family has moved in. Su Xu snorted lightly and said, then I will write a letter to the factory leaders, asking them to take back the house and reassign you a single dormitory that is enough for you to live alone. No way. Your grandparents won't move in, Zhang Fun was very confident. You also said that Zhang Bao Zhen is getting married, how could the whole family move into our house? There are only two rooms in the house, 
one for me and the other for you and your son. In law to stay when they come home. It's no use talking too much at this time. Anyway, Zhang Fen firmly believes that her maternal family will not treat her like her daughter said. Some things are not presented to her, and this person cannot see reality clearly. Su Xu is too lazy to argue with Zhang Fen on this issue. The family of three finished dinner peacefully, and Su Xu led them to tidy up their belongings one by one. They tidied up until after ten o'clock, and Su Xu led the already sleepy and yawning ones back to their room to rest. This night, Zhang Fen was the only one who couldn't sleep. While accepting the fact that her daughter was getting married tomorrow and leaving home with her niece, she also remembered her late husband and cried for the whole night. Zhang Fen, who had hardly slept all night, still woke up early the next day. Although she was feeling uneasy, she thought that her son dot in dot law would come today and went to the supply and marketing agency to queue up to buy some vegetables and meat to entertain him. Zhang Fen thought that at least she would have to finish lunch at home before leaving. Unexpectedly, she took a half day off from work after buying groceries, and when she returned home, she saw a car parked downstairs. I only found out when I asked that her family had guests early in the morning. Not to mention Zhang Fen's surprise, even Su Xu was surprised. Upon hearing the knocking at home, Su Xu thought that Zhang Fen had forgotten to bring the key when going out. Wearing pajamas and with sleepy eyes, I opened the door and saw two men standing straight at the door. Then I heard Liang Jingua ask her in a stern tone, Am I coming too early? Dot. Su Xu was speechless for a few seconds. Seeing him wearing a watch on his wrist, Su Xu pulled his hand and glanced at it. 7.30 in the morning. She couldn't help but cast a glance at Liang Jingua with your own quality. You know, when he marries his wife, he is eager. I don't know, I thought he came up early in the morning with people to block people and demand debt. Liang Jingua, you will arrive at me at 7.30, so what time did you depart and wait for the train? Su Xu asked. Liang Jingua heard a hint of unusual emotions from Su Xu's tone, so he didn't answer immediately, but first pondered the meaning of Su Xu's words. This girl seems to dislike him for coming too early. So, does she really regret that she doesn't want to get married? The man who came with Liang Jingua laughed out loud when he heard it. Sisters-in-law, Liang Jingua came to me before dawn. We both drove from the city and he was anxious. He wanted to marry you back home as soon as possible. Chen Wei didn't lie either. The two of them really set off just before dawn and it took them three hours to get the things that were hastily prepared last night downstairs. You guys come sit in first, I'll go change clothes. Su Xu smiled friendly at the speaker and quickly walked back to the room. When she changed her clothes and came out, a corner of the living room was already filled with things. Upon closer inspection, they were all good things. In addition to the candy requested by Su Xu yesterday, there are also some valuable things. There are cigarettes and alcohol, as well as some supplements and dry goods. Liang Jingwa has put in a lot of effort to get these things overnight these days, which is enough to prove that he values this marriage very much. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Marrying you is a loss. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Marrying you is a loss When Zhang Fen got dressed and came out of the room, she happened to be home. Perhaps she heard her neighbor say something downstairs, so Zhang Fen also realized who the guests were at home. Seeing Zhang Fen looking back and forth between the two, Liang Jingwa quickly took a step forward and took the initiative to call out. Mom, I'm Liang Jingwa and this is my friend Chen Wei. I borrowed his company's car today and he accompanied me to pick up Su Xu. Chen Wei is much more lively than Liang Jingwa. After Liang Jingwa finished speaking, he took the conversation. Auntie, this was prepared by Liang Jingwa last night in a hurry. The preparation may not have been comprehensive, so please bear with it. If there is anything missing, just let Liang Jingwa make up for it. After saying that, Chen Wei also praised, and is really young. 
She stands with her younger siblings and looks like a sister's. Zhang Fun is a hospitable person. When she regained her senses, she nodded repeatedly while holding the dishes in her hand. These are all good things, there's nothing missing. Just have these things, you two have to worry. As Zhang Fun shook the dishes in her hand, a smile appeared on her face. You guys sit down first, I'll go to the kitchen to put things away. I've bought a lot of dishes, let's have lunch together. Zhang Fen could still laugh when she saw Liang Jingua because he was handsome and brought valuable gifts. She felt that Liang Jingua did not underestimate her daughter. Moreover, Zhang Fen believes that Liang Jingua's early arrival indicates that Liang Jingua values Su Xu. The most important thing is that Liang Jingua called her mom. Zhang Fen was happy on his side, but when Liang Jingua heard Zhang Fen leaving them for lunch, he instinctively looked at Su Xu. Su Xu said yesterday that he could go to the city after obtaining the certificate and receiving the candy, so he asked Chen Wei to take half a day off to accompany him to pick him up. If we keep food, Chen Wei won't be able to return to his workplace at noon. Liang Jingua estimated that he could only ask Chen Wei to help him bring Su Xu's things back to the city first, and then invite Chen Wei and his wife to have a meal to show off when he and Su Xu returned to the city. Su Xu had no intention of staying until noon, so he called out to Zhang Fun. Mom, don't be busy. I'll tidy up and go with Liang Jingua to get the certificate. Once we get the certificate, I'll go to my unit and then we'll go to the city. There was a clanging sound in the kitchen, and it was Zhang Fun who heard Su Xu's words and suddenly couldn't hold on to the things in her hand and fell to the ground. It was a while before she came out of the kitchen, her eyes turning red again. Why did you leave so quickly? His tone was full of reluctance, you don't even have the time to eat a meal. Liang Jingguo was about to speak up when he saw this, but Su Xu was faster than him. Mom, Liang Jingguo and Chen Wei drove over very early. They probably haven't had breakfast yet, and Yi and I haven't had either. Otherwise, let's have breakfast together. After breakfast, we can leave. Su Xu took a small step back. It's really hard to harden one's heart with Zhang Fen's appearance. Hey. All right. Just have breakfast. I'll go make breakfast and make a sweet soup, and your days will be sweet and sweet from now on. Zhang Fen felt much more comfortable and quickly went back to the kitchen to work. At least it's better to be able to sit down and have a meal together than not having any ceremony. When Zhang Fen was making breakfast, Liang Jingua and Chen Wei helped to move Su Xu and Yi Yi's luggage to the car downstairs. After finishing work, seeing Zhang Fen's posture of preparing several dishes, Su Xu took some cookies and asked everyone to cushion their stomachs first. Turning her head, she saw the smoke and wine displayed in the corner and began to ponder. There is no man at home who can consume these cigarettes and alcohol. When she leaves, keeping these things here will also be cheaper for the Zhang family. After finishing the biscuits, Su Xu went to the kitchen and said to Zhang Fun, then asked Yi Yi to accompany Chen Wei at home. She called out to Liang Jingua, brought cigarettes, alcohol, and some dry goods that Zhang Fen didn't eat much, and left the door. Su Xu didn't leave Liang Jingua far away. Instead, he went downstairs to the retired grandmother's house and gave her some candy and dry goods, thanking her for taking care of them recently. Then he gave cigarettes and wine to several leaders in the factory. These leaders are very kind to Su Jianxing, and Su Xu can be considered a favor. I hope that after she takes them all away, these uncles and uncles can help take care of Zhang Fen who stays here alone in the future. When the two of them returned home empty-handed, Zhang Fun indeed prepared a table of food for them to go home. Liang Jingua is a quiet person. During meals, it's always Chen Wei talking, sometimes exaggerating his culinary skills, and sometimes praising him for being obedient and sensible. Then he praised Su Xu for being gentle and virtuous, and then went back to praise his brother Liang Jingua for being responsible and a good man. Su Xu married him without any hardship. Chen Wei was heartbroken because he was afraid that Liang Jingua, who was not good at speaking, 
would leave a bad impression on his mother. In law. Therefore, he wished he could use all the good words he could think of on Yang Zhenghua. After all, the certificate has not been obtained yet, and Chen Wei is afraid that his good brother will be returned. After finishing the meal, Su Xu followed up with the kitchen to help Zhang Fen clean up the dishes. At this moment, Zhang Fen, like all mothers in the world who want to marry a daughter, has endless reminders and worries to her daughter. She even blamed herself for forcing her daughter so hard that she made this impulsive decision in a fit of anger, without even a proper ceremony. Standing silently behind the two of them, he only occasionally curiously sneaked to look at the two sitting in the living room. Zhang Fen's voice was not loud, but the house was also not big. Her chattering voice could be faintly heard by people sitting in the living room. Liang Jinghua listened carefully for a while, but he never heard Su Xu's tone. He couldn't help but turn his head to look at Chen Wei, who was helping him inquire about the news. Pointing at Chen Wei's eyes in an indescribable sentence, go back to the city and go to the hospital to see your eyes when you have time. What Su Xu did yesterday and today, and the personality she displayed, Liang Jinghua believes, has nothing to do with being weak and easy to bully, and has nothing to do with being indecisive. This girl clearly has a big idea and a tough temper. That mouth is also eloquent and very likable to the neighbors and elders. Because I don't want to make the Zhang family cheaper, I give away valuable cigarettes and alcohol as gifts. The heartfelt words she said when giving someone something seemed to make people think she respected and appreciated those uncles and uncles as if they were relatives. The gift was sent out, and the recipient felt deeply comforted, feeling that the girl was sensible and had a conscience. Liang Jinghua even felt that if Su Xu had sold someone while giving gifts, those people might have been helping Su Xu count money without any understanding. Chen Wei was mocked and looked inexplicable. He raised his hand and gave Liang Jinghua an elbow in the stomach. I don't have to worry about his mother's strange aura. My eyes are very good, and I can easily move forward without hesitation. After retaliating against Liang Jinghua, Chen Wei whispered again, Miss Su Xu, you've been married at a loss. If it weren't for the fear that you'll be single for the rest of your life, I wouldn't have spoken out of conscience just now. Liang Jinghua glanced at him and remained silent. A few people finished washing their dishes in a while, and Zhang Fen walked out of the kitchen holding one hand. Zhang Fen's emotions were hard to conceal, tears kept falling. The little girl pursed her lips and remained silent. On the other hand, Su Xu couldn't even tell that today was her wedding day. Liang Jinghua, please write down the contact address of the farm for my mother. You know I don't like the Zhang family and can't handle them impatiently. The farm address, no matter how the Zhang family asks you, don't tell them, Su Xu instructed Zhang Fun, turning his head seeing Zhang Fun still wiping tears, Su Xu softened her tone, when I arrive, I will write to you. During the Chinese New Year holiday, you can also go to the farm to find us. Don't you dislike me and E, and we can come back to stay with you for a while even if we have nothing to do. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Obtaining Certificates You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Obtaining Certificates Zhang Fun hurriedly said, No problem, you can come back any time. This is your home, and mom is waiting for you at home. Remember to write a letter to mom. Zhang Fenxin was reluctant to part, but he still escorted Su Xu and his group downstairs, wiping his tears and sending them to board the car. The farewell during the farewell was endless, and Su Xu comforted Zhang Fen a few words before letting Chen Wei drive. Following the route, the group went to the Civil Affairs Bureau first. About twenty minutes later, the car stopped at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Chen Wei stopped the car and said, E and I will stay in the car and wait for you. You too can go on your own to obtain the certificate. Liang Jinghua let out a sigh and didn't immediately open the door and get off the car. He sat in the passenger seat, but turned his head to look at Su Xu in the back seat. Ask her, do you have a plan to obtain a certificate from me? Are you sure? Is there anything else you want to ask me? 
Su Xu had already opened the car door and was about to get off the car. When she heard Liang Jinghua asking her so seriously, she really sat back and carefully looked at Liang Jinghua. It really reminds her of something important. Su Xu asked seriously, I heard you're injured and recovering. Can I ask if you're injured on your waist? Is your waist okay? At this moment, Chen Wei was drinking water from a kettle when Su Xu's question made him splash a mouthful of water onto the front glass. The little water left in his mouth almost swallowed into his trachea, causing him to cough violently. Su Xu thought his question was very vague, but seeing Chen Wei's reaction, this person understood. No matter how shameless, that was also an unmarried little girl. Su Xu still felt a bit embarrassed and pretended to scratch her ears. But Liang Jinghua clearly didn't hear it, even though Su Xu was concerned about his health. She asked seriously, but he answered more seriously. I didn't hurt my waist, it's already healed. Thank you for your concern. Chen Wei finally regained his composure, glanced at Liang Jinghua's serious face, and quickly nodded in agreement. Yes, younger siblings, don't worry. He didn't hurt his waist, his legs, and even his shoulders. His waist is not in any way, so just rest assured. Liang Jinghua didn't notice anything in Chen Wei's words and nodded, yes. Oh, Su Xu felt guilty and touched the tip of her nose, then opened the car door and got off. Su Xu's action told Liang Jinghua her answer, and Liang Jinghua only slowed her down by one second before getting off the car. Chen Wei sat in the car and looked at the two people walking side by side towards the Civil Affairs Bureau. He couldn't help but chuckle twice. In the eyes of others, his brother is someone who has already been married once and has two sons, but in fact. In fact, Liang Jinghua has never even held a girl's hand. The nominal wife in front has nothing to do with him, and the child is not his either. The twists and turns in the middle are mixed with too many things. Only a few people know the truth, not even Liang Jinghua's grandmother and others. His brother has married such an interesting wife now, and there will be more fun to watch in the future. E.E. E. was originally sitting there eagerly watching the two people get off the car. When she heard the laughter from her uncle in front, she suddenly asked in confusion, Uncle, why do you smile so like a villain? Chen Wei's laughter suddenly stopped. Hey, I laughed too much, but I forgot there's such a little girl in the car. The Civil Affairs Bureau was not busy, and the two of them came out in less than five minutes, while Liang Jinghua had something else in his hand. It's a marriage certificate. From the moment he received his marriage certificate, the smile on Liang Jinghua's face was suppressed. Even the staff of the Civil Affairs Bureau were dazzled by his smile and even said to Su Xu, Your lover is happy. You two are truly a perfect match in terms of talent and beauty. After leaving the Civil Affairs Bureau, Liang Chun Kuo still felt a sense of unease. He got married. I have a wife now. He will have his own home in the future. Comrade Su Xu, I assure you that in the future, I will definitely take on all the responsibilities that a husband should bear. This is like admonishing oneself, and also like taking an oath with Su Xu. Liang Jinghua put his marriage certificate in his pocket and patted it through his pocket. I'll keep my marriage certificate, he said Su Xu shrugged casually, he just kept it, it's not much use anyway. It was Liang Jinghua's heartfelt words that touched her deeply. Well, she's married. Comrade Liang Jinghua, please take good care of her in the future, Su Xu said, reaching out to him, learning from Liang Jinghua's way of addressing her. Liang Jinghua looked down at her in surprise and was stunned for a few seconds before reaching out his hand that was pressing against his pocket. This should be Liang Jinghua's first time holding a girl's hand. The girl's hand was unexpectedly soft. Unlike his calloused hands, touching hard. Su Xu's hands were soft and warm. Liang Jinghua felt that it was now legal to hold hands with a certificate, so he didn't immediately let go of it. He just held her and led her towards the parking spot. As we walked, we inquired about Su Xu's next arrangements. Su Xu was mainly counterattacked by Liang Jinghua, and she was stunned by what she saw. 
Oh, man, there's really no need to teach in this kind of thing. People like Liang Chun Kuo can self-taught and become successful. It was not until Liang Zhengguo was about to board the car that he released Su Xu's hand. Returning to the car, Chen Wei's meaningful laughter came first, followed by Chen Wei's congratulations. Congratulations, let me first wish you a hundred years of good marriage and an early birth of a precious son. After that, Chen Wei turned his head and spoke to Su Xu in the back seat. Sisters and sisters, we will all be our own people in the future. Liang Zhengguo has a stubborn personality. If there is anything that makes you angry or dissatisfied, don't keep it quiet and make yourself angry. Tell me, and I will help you clean up with him in the future. Other girls may shy down and smile when they hear these words. Where is Su Xu? She smiled, she smiled very contentedly. Then I'll say thank you first. Liang Jingguo glanced back and then sneered at Chen Wei, drive your car. Don't worry about everyone's perception, he never thinks there's anything wrong with his personality. He doesn't think he's wooden. Everyone in the factory knew that they didn't want to cause trouble. When they arrived at the factory gate, Su Xu didn't let Liang Jingguo follow her in. She carried a bag of candy and went to find Huang Jie first. She gave Huang Jie some candy, Huang Jie gave her money, and even said a lot of blessings to her. Huang also asked why the groom didn't come together today. Knowing that people were waiting in the car outside, Huang didn't ask much and instead talked to Su Xu about Zhang Baojian. This person is really rotten from the bottom. He came to the office this morning and didn't do anything, I don't know where he went. According to the workshop director, he seems to have fallen in love with a female worker in workshop one. He even told the female worker that when you get married, he will have his grandmother propose marriage to her house, saying he can give her a dowry of 200 yuan. Su Xu raised his eyebrows, and Zhang Baojian was treating the dowry money given to her by Liang Zhengguo as his. Oh by the way, I have received all the certificates. Liang Zhengguo has not yet given her the dowry. If it weren't for Sister Huang mentioning it, she would have almost forgotten. He also told the female worker that if she marries him, she can live in the family building of the machinery factory, and said that his aunt has no son. He is the only son of the Zhang family, and all his aunt's belongings are his. Zhang Baojian is used to making things public, but he can't stop talking. If something happens, he wants to show off to everyone. The female worker he was interested in had a similar odor to Zhang Baojian. Zhang Baojian boasted about what he had told her. In order to show off, she found a good partner and turned around to share Zhang Baogan's words with her colleagues in the same workshop. That's how these words spread to Huang Jie. End of this chapter